Hey friends, thank you for joining me for part two of my fragrance reorganizing series at this point. I was hoping to be able to do this in one video. That just wasn't possible. If you watched part one, you know that I got through <laughs> creating a vanilla shelf. And I do have a couple of updates to the vanilla shelf in this video that I will share with you. But I got super tired and needed to take a break and go to sleep and hit it again. I thought I was gonna be able to hit it again early the next morning with some coffee, but that just never happened. So here we are probably a week later. I will say that I have made progress. This shelf is a hot mess right here with a hodgepodge of everything and the kitchen sink. Okay, but I have made some progress on the shelves below and I wanna share that with you before we get to some of tonight's organizing. I do have some assistants with me today. <laughs> suggested by some of you in the comments by the way that was probably one of the most active comment sections i've ever had in my videos thank you so much you guys as i said at the end of that video you rock thank you so much for all of the positive comments the moral support the hand in hand sisterhood and if if you're a brother out there brother and sisterhood of fragrance reorganization crazy people here we are again in part two. I think I'm going to be able to get through at least one more shelf tonight. And then we're going to get to a part three. I just can't do it all, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I've made so much progress. You all had some wonderful suggestions in the other video, some of which I am able to take and then one of which I cannot. And I just want to share why, because there were a lot of comments about using risers on these shelves. These are very shallow shelves, you know, so there's not a lot of room front to back for risers. And if I put the risers in, it'll take up a lot of space and I won't be able to get as many fragrances into the shelf as I want. And I want to show you what I mean with the top vintage shelf, which I have realized as I have done these other shelves, there are some of these that actually need to go above in the vintage shelf because I keep them for nostalgic reasons. There are those fragrances that you want to come by and sniff, but you may not want to wear them very often because they are dated smells or super duper strong smells. When you talk about like 80s fragrances, late 70s, 80s, early 90s, some of those fragrances can be like bombastic, taking over a room. So you you want to make sure you're in the mood to wear them you know what i mean because they're going to take you through the whole day so let me show you what i mean with the risers and then let me give you an update on the progress i've made on the shelves and we'll try to finish a shelf a shelf let's see how we do so cheers so some of you suggested that i get a step stool because one of my issues is that the top shelves are really high i've never shared this i don't think on this channel I'm kind of short. I'm five foot three. And these shelves up here, that one is that very top shelf is probably, I don't know, like at the seven foot ish, seven and a half foot level. People suggested a step stool. And I just want you to know, I have a step stool. <laughs> I have this one. Thank you, Amazon. I don't keep it out here. I keep it in my closet, which is that direction, you know, probably like six to eight feet away. So when needed, I do pull this out, but I don't want to keep it out here because it is not aesthetically pleasing to keep out in the bedroom. But I do want to show you what I mean with the riser situation. So give me a second to get up on this step stool without crashing my head. Okay, so I have one of those like three tier risers here that people suggested, which is a great idea. Thank you so much. I do have risers. I have one here, but you'll see that the fragrances on this vintage shelf, even though like... Like this is not a vintage formulation of Beyond Paradise. That's not a vintage formulation of Emerald. That's not a vintage formulation of Roomba. You get the idea. But they represent vintage fragrances in my mind. But these risers, they do take up a lot of space and you can't really like shove fragrances onto there. You gotta be a little bit careful about that. So I can't get as many fragrances on this vintage shelf as I would like. However, I do have risers here in the linen closet. So like here's one, here's another one. And then back there, although you can't tell all of those fragrances in the back are sitting on three tiered risers. So they work in here because this is a much deeper shelf. So there's space to actually put the risers in. I can't put them up here because honestly, I'm just too short to reach. And you'll see that this shelf here sticks out a lot farther. So I'd be having to do a really awkward reach and Ain't nobody got time for that. So let's get to Actually, organizing. Before we organize, I did promise to give you an update on a few of the shelves that I've done so far. So this is, if you remember, the vanilla shelf. Let's talk about what happened with this vanilla shelf because as I mentioned in the last video, I knew I would discover others that belong here. And if you'll remember, I said that I had a vanilla 28 on the way. So there it is, that baby made it home. 
I forgot, I told you I have tobacco vanille dupes, but I completely forgot about the best one of them all, which is the tobacco edition of El Haramein Amber Oud. So that made it in here with the other tobacco vanille dupes. I also recently picked up this vanilla milk from Ellis Brooklyn, which you will see in a blind buy video coming up and probably in like a either a vanilla or a cozy sweater fragrance kind of a video. Here in the future. I did end up putting, for better or for worse, Zara's Sweet Pastry in Paris. I do really enjoy this lemon. It's like a fresh lemon bar out of an oven, but it has a lot of vanilla in it. And maybe I need to put this over here close to my Mont Blanc, which I did wear recently very quickly, like overnight or something like that, because they're in the same family. And then, so let's go on to, oh, I'm sorry. We did not talk about this, did we? That Tom Ford Noir Pour Femme made it here. All right, and then here's what I started to do, and I'm not done with this shelf. Dun, 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 dun. I put my super coffee forward fragrances here. I did recently post a coffee video, and I have one more coffee fragrance on the way, which is the absolute version of this Hugo Boss Private Accord. Thank you to my fragrant friend, Jay awesome channel go check her out for putting me on to the absolute and for some of you in the comments who mentioned it anyway so i i think i'm not sure this is the part i'm not really sure about so be interested in your thoughts but i decided to put my like cozy sweater fluffy fragrances in here i don't know that they belong here y'all but there's something about these that seem to belong here then you have anomalies like the c which is like a citrusy marshmallowy and it has a little bit of, of florals in there too kind of fragrance with musk i don't know that this belongs here but i think of it as belonging here even though it doesn't listen this kiss don't be shy which is obviously a dupe for love don't be shy this is beautiful from Alexandria Fragrances, dead on dupe. Anyway, I finally got my hands on Princess, a full bottle from Killian. I didn't know if I wanted to buy it. So if you've heard me in other videos say, I don't think I'm going to get a full bottle. I lied. <gasps> Here's a full bottle. And I do like it. Anyway, uh, here in this little section, do you belong here? I put my vanillas that are also really cozy and sexy. And I have so many more. I wonder if these belong on a shelf that are like my highly feminine fragrances because that's how I think about these. Certainly, Sol de Janeiro is like a nutty fragrance. So then, has pistachio and caramel and all that. So then, I wonder if we're doing like a gourmandish kind of shelf, coffees and others. Do I want to put my nut fragrances here, like my almonds, pistachio kinds of fragrances? So I have to think that through. This is not. This is a work in progress. And then over here, I put my fall apple pie or close to that and cinnamon kinds of fragrances like here's you know the queen angel share y'all this is a new one i'll talk about this soon but this is corvin's smoked apple from Sto solstice scents uh it's a solid like hmm, six or seven really interesting fragrance i'll talk about that soon if you have not tried apple crumb this is a dead on dupe for ojan from parfums and marley beautiful fragrance Anywho, some of these fragrances here or all of these fragrances remind me of like kitchen spices or apple pie in some way, including Chinatown. A lot of people think of this as a tuberose, like a white floral fragrance. For me, this is very heavy on cardamom, leaning in the cinnamon direction with some florals and some woodiness. So to me, this reminds me of a beautiful fall cinnamony, cardamomy kind of a situation. Does it have ginger? I don't remember exactly. Anyway, Montel, Honey Oud, oof. So good. And then Caltech at Night, which is like an intensified version of Angel Share. Anyway, this is not a perfume review. But I need to figure out what I want to do in this situation. This situation right here. <laughs> do I want to take out my sweater fragrances, cozy sweater fragrances, and fill them up with like almond nut kinds of fragrances or something else? I'm not quite sure. So, but it seems to make sense to me. Like we're going, to, you know, vanillas all the way to like the chocolates, to the coffees, to the something else marshmallowy kind of a situation. Here's the anomaly, right? Like I don't know what to do. <laughs> These are the sweet female vanilla heavy fragrances, the kitchen spicy kinds of ones. And then let's go down here and let's talk. I'm on my knees for y'all. This is dedication. Dedication. Can I get can I get an amen? So I recently purchased Dead Cool Milk because the reviews are outrageous. Bergamot, white musk, white musk, white musk, and amber. Um, does this smell good? Yes. 
you see it's still in the box. And here's the receipt because this might be going back. This was so light, I can barely detect it. So I'm not really sure. I'm going to try that again. We'll see. Okay, so here we have the spicy ambery group, which is not complete. I need to put more there. Okay, so you see some of the classics. Shalimar, Coco Chanel, the, the Coco Eau de Parfum, the, the Eau de Toilette version. Okay, you see Amber Sultan from Serge Luton, Ely Saab, Ambra, Essence Number no. 3, so on and so forth. Dune, Rocious Absolute. I can't wait to wear this more this winter. I have both of these Muse here. I have a feeling that EDT maybe belongs up here in the, you know, chocolatey section, but I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so then we move into the woody fragrances, which is this corner. All right, these are heavily woody fragrances. There may be other prominent notes, but woody accords are what stand out to me over in this section. What are you? Gold incense. Yes, incense and wood. Instant Crush. Look, I know some people think about this as a BR540 dupe. I don't, but I do think it can get very heavily woody in the dry down. Obviously, Majestic Woods from Juicy Couture. Coco Noir, which is a spicy woody fragrance. Woody Rum, which is a dupe for Straight to Heaven. This is like the queen of the woodies to me. Tory Birch Knock on Wood. Orchid Prairie from La Yucca, well, it's the, the La Yucca one line from Razazi, so on and so forth. You get the idea here. And so then let's go down here and let me sit on my bum. Hang on a second, y'all. I'm getting old. Boom. All right. Goodness. Whoo. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here are my uh, tobacco fragrances. Some of these have other accords, like a liquor or rum accord, or maybe even incense. Like these four here are like my incense -y vibe kinds of fragrances, like myrrh. Um, yeah, people may say that myrrh is not an incense or whatever. I don't even want to get into all that because I don't know and I don't care. It kind of vibes the same for me. Myrrh and Tonka, uh, Kasba. Okay, and then I get into the tobacco-y range over in here, like Woody Tobacco, which is Jazz Club, but I also have Jazz Club, Cure Cuba Intense, uh, Moira or Moira from Okcha, which is a dupe for Herod, the queen or king of the tobacco fragrances, Tobacco Maniac from Theodorus Calatinas. Look, y'all, you into a good, uh, excuse me, you get into a good tobacco, this Ombre Tobacco from Daniel Hosier. Woo -hoo, hidden gem. I am planning on doing like a woody fragrance, woody and tobacco kinds of fragrances video. Would you like that? So most of the viewers for my channel, okay, are in the like 35 to 70 ish range. Hello. Thank you so much for subscribing and heavily female. That's neither here nor there. However, would you as a group be interested in tobacco and woody fragrances? You know, there's no point in doing a video if people aren't going to enjoy it. Shergi from Serge Luton, which is a deep tobacco hay. I think there's some honey in here. Look how dark that juice is. Woo! <laughs> um, okay, and then we get into, this is the oud group here. And this is not all the ouds because I still have to fit in. Oh, lordy, lordy. How am I going to fit in the dupes? I may have to like rearrange the shelf above, like push everything that direction and maybe put my ouds over there or something. We'll see. But oud Ispahan from Bocheron. Beautiful. You've got oud bouquet. This one's saffron. Oud saffron from Orientica, which is the dupe for oud bouquet. You guys, if you're into a real heavy oud, is it heavy? I would say medium to heavy. That is also like a really opulent fragrance. It's This has a long name. Samo Al, hold on, sorry, let me do it here. <laughs> Samo Al Rosazi Mali Eau de Parfum from, I think this is Rosazi, or Yulatafa. Rosazi, yes, I was right. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm not going to go over them all. This Al Haramein U36 Nui is a bomb of a fragrance. Over in here are my sandalwood heavy fragrances, right over. In here, like Santal Vani, like Santal Wood. This, if you're into a beautiful woody sandalwood, you, I don't often say this, you need this in your life. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> Santal Cardamom, which I think is just a hidden gem from the Maison Lancome. Or Santal's Kiss, which is a dupe for Santal 33. And then we get over into the leather category, which I... 
wait, let me share with you. I'm sorry, one more. If you like really strong sandalwoods, this Supreme Sandal from Roberto Cavalli is bomb.com. Very, very strong, very potent. Don't don't go playing. Don't go playing with this one, okay? All right, folks. Um, this is my leather collection over here, and there's some more that belong in here. You have your really, really soft, pretty feminine leathers like Bottega, Veneta, along with your super strong like oriental leather from Alexandria Fragrances. White suede from Tom Ford is on the softer end. Platinum leather from Carolina Herrera is not playing around. <laughs> One of my strongest fragrances that is also quite bizarre but beautiful, Cure Lang, Cure Ylang from Ely Saab. So I'm trying to think through like, what do I wanna to accomplish tonight that would be useful for you all to see, useful for me. There are two shelves I know I wanna do for a fact, even though I haven't like totally completed the shelves I just showed you. I want to do a fruity, sweet, feminine, fruity, maybe floral, fruity floral, sweet, feminine fragrances like the Femme Fatales, but that are in that direction. And I want, what well, do I want to do a patchouli shelf? Oh my gosh. No, I don't want a whole patchouli shelf because I don't have that, that many patchouli fragrances. So that's not going to happen. So anyway, the Femme Fatale, fruity, whatever kinds of fragrances. And then I think I also want to do, like I mentioned in the first video, a power florals shelf. So let's see which one starts to like emerge first, like what comes out of the woodwork here first, and we'll roll with that and get that shelf done and then call it a night. See, but then like, what about tea? <laughs> Should I put tea fragrances? This is the linen closet with the double doors open, just so you see what we're working with here. Should I put tea fragrances in with the like coffee and chocolate or is that like blasphemy? <laughs> yes, I promise I'm going to make this work for me and not worry about it too much. But this is the kind of chaotic stuff that happens in my mind, you know? And what about cherry? Cherry's gourmand. It's edible, but it's also fruity. I don't know that I have the like the chutzpah for this, y'all. I've overwhelmed myself again. <laughs> So I'm just going to have my glass of wine, watch a movie with my husband, go to sleep, and tackle this again. Stay tuned. Oh my God. So I cannot believe that I'm actually 99.9% .9 done rearranging this collection of fragrances. So I'm going to show you where I ended up. And we're starting in my closet with the collection of fragrances that I consider to be like white t-shirt, everyday, run errands, easy reach kinds of fragrances. They don't kind of all fit into that category, but pretty much. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this wasn't an exact science, but as I was arranging the collection, I was thinking when I picked up a fragrance, is this something that I know, I know is going to smell good. It's going to meet most of my moods and that I can throw on super quickly to go to the supermarket, to go to a parent teacher conference, anything like that, you know, go to the bank. So maybe they don't all fit in this category. <laughs> And perhaps something like this, like the only one in tents really belongs in like a date night category. But generally speaking, these are very trustworthy fragrances that I know, like Mon Guerlain is going to do me right on like a jeans and white t-shirt kind of a day. So we've got like Soleil Neige, Vele from Tiziana Terenzi, which is like this green coconutty floral fragrance, both uh, the EDT and the EDP of Versace uh, Noir. I'm sorry, Versace Crystal Noir, your uh, Oscar de la Renta Bella Blanca, nice clean white floral. Let's see, Agia Blossom by Erin. Some odds and ends like D Demeter Wet Garden, which smells just like a wet garden. It's really kind of crazy. <laughs> and then, you know, like Burberry Her back there. You've seen this one. This is a crazy looking bottle, but it really is quite a nice little simple, like fruity, clean, floral fragrance. Passion Eau de Parfum. I think it's Armoff. Who makes you? Yep, Armoff. You've got Pure DKNY, Nuda Veritas from Atelier des Elizabeth Arden, White Tea. And sometimes I get a hankering for something a little tropical when I run errands. And so I've got Bronze Goddess Au Fresh here. Initio Musk Therapy, which is easily like a sophisticated date night or any other kind of night or day fragrance. But I mostly associate this with simplicity and cleanliness. So anyway, you get the idea of the collection here. Do they all belong here? It's debatable, but that's what I'm going 
going with for now. Let's keep looking. So then here are the summer fragrances that I think I'm actually gonna put into a bin and put un under the clothing in my closet to go away unless I get a hankering for them. I don't really believe in like seasonal fragrances and putting them away, you know? Some people do that, like they rotate out their fragrances and I totally get that. But for me, I get a hankering for stuff like Aaron Hibiscus Palm in the winter. That said, I do need some more space, so I decided to just go ahead and put away my very tropical, floral, beachy kinds of fragrances, as well as my mainly coconut fragrances. So those are going in a bin somewhere in my closet. I really don't know what to do with this House of Siage Disney bottle because I purchased it for the bottle. The fragrance is okay. It's like a clean, uh, soft, subtle coconut. It's all right, but I really just like the bottle and I don't want to put it away because I would really like to look at the bottle. I'm a Disney fanatic, so yeah, I got to figure out like where I want to display that. I did clear off this shelf here, which had, ooh, it's dusty. That's nasty. Oh my gosh, I better clean that off. <laughs> But now I have room. Maybe I'll just put some more towels or whatever in there. I'm not quite sure. My husband's fragrances that I share with him, they're going to stay on this shelf. He really likes his shelf. But certainly I use a lot of these. Like Santal Blush is a favorite of mine. The Cedar and Acacia. The Sandal Ruby. And, and some others over there. So anyway, we'll talk about those another time. But my husband's shelf will stay the same. I managed to clear off like this whole space here in my sample area. This was packed with samples and travel sprays and all of that so I'm still working through these and I think I'm going to give a lot of these away after I try them out thanks to all my friends on YouTube that have sent me samples I appreciate you now let's step back and see ah, the progress that I have made with this shelf here which was about to runneth over if you remember there were fragrances all the way up to the edge that were about to fall off so the way that I have arranged this very roughly this is crude this is not an exact science so You'll notice some things out of place. So here are, generally speaking, more fruity kinds of fragrances. Now you'll notice, for example, Dolce Garden, which yes, it has a coconut note, but you know, it can also be considered in this area. Like it has the same vibe as these other fragrances here. So we're gonna keep those there. And then I got into the more floral fruity fragrances back there for the most part. You know, some of those have some like orange blossom kinds of notes in them, but I group those together generally in the floral fruity range. We start to move over in here into like the musky floral category. Then you've got some florals with orange blossoms. Let's see what else we have going on here. We have more in your musky range back there, floral musks. Okay, and then I left like Bronze Goddess. You see that one back there, the bronze bottle? I left it out there because it's powerful enough to really take me through the winter. Moving along, we have the fragrances that I think are heavy floral. They have tuberose or gardenia or a heavy white floral that stands out. So that's all up in here. Moving along to like the heavily tuberose kinds of fragrances. Moving along to the jasmine centric fragrances. Over in this corner are all of my rose centric fragrances. There are some anomalies like Cafe Rose, which is both a strong coffee and a strong rose fragrance but since my coffee shelf runneth over I'm putting this one here I kept this upper shelf here mostly it's like I said not an exact science but mostly citric forward kinds of fragrances it doesn't all work out for example that one there Lita Lempica green lover I could probably put that on my vanilla shelf but this is like all my citrus and greens kinds of fragrances for the most part there's some other greens and citruses elsewhere but there you go I did keep my vintage shelf mostly the same except I added calyx back there into the mix and then remember this one remember tea rose <laughs> Hello, late 80s, early 90s, I see you. I'm probably not gonna wear tea rose because it does remind me heavily of potpourri, but we wore that in high school like it was going out of style. So this shelf is gonna stay mostly the same. Now, come on down here. This is where I had my more like clean t-shirt fragrances and I've switched these out. Over here are fragrances that I consider to be very much one-of-a-kind fragrances. Like I have Coriandra, I have Decadence, I have uh, La Panthère, I have this Bulgari fragrance, which I love. I have Fan Your Flames from Nishane. I have Alang Alang Be Nosy back here. Black Orchid, Black Orchid Voile de Fleur. I have Bulgari, which is a heavily aldehydic, beautiful fragrance. 
Shamal from 1942. Dolce Amalfi, Ghost. These are fragrances that sort of defy description for me. And they don't really, they, you know, it's like one of these things is doing its own thing. That's what these fragrances are. Femininity by Mansara. Yes, it's not femininity. It's femininity, my friends. <laughs> femininity. Anywho, in here are my fragrances that have a, you know, fairly predominant iris note. Like, like Iris Door from Bulgari, the Narciso Rouge, Iris Shot, well, Balenciaga. So Violet and Iris is over here in this section, okay? Iris Drage. Here are my fragrances that have predominant patchouli or a lot of patchouli enough to be in this section. So like your Angels, Moon Dance, Patchouli by... <laughs> Reminisce, is it reminisce? Reminiscence. Patchouli Aromatique, Agent Provocateur, which, you know, is arguably a rose fragrance, but I'm gonna leave it in here. I did put Flower Bomb in there. I should probably buy a new one. That fragrance I've had for probably seven years or something like that, since it, you know, originally came out and I put quite the dent in it and maybe it's time to refresh. Okay, so then let's go down to this, this shelf. This is the shelf that's right above the mainly vanilla shelf. So let me show you what I did here. By the way, I didn't think I would get it, but I went ahead and got it. Victoria's Secret Bear. Husband loves this. Very, very subtle, vanilla, close to the skin, cuddly fragrance. Anyway, this is my sweater weather fragrance section. Okay, so cozy, cozy fragrances. And you've got everything from Kate Spade, Sparkle, Signorina Misteriosa, 100 Silent Ways, Finally Found Its Home, Amo Ferragamo. I don't know that these belong here, but I wanted to keep them out. So you have to forgive me. They really kind of don't belong. But Kayali Utopia, Vanilla Coco 21. It's not a sweater weather fragrance. It's a tropical floral kind of a fragrance, but I love it. Luna Dulcius from Exendus. Lavandus Trianon back there. You know, Killian. Let's see. Mercurial Cashmere is back here. My Armani Code uh, Cashmere and Code Absolute. Sateen. Oh my God. Shun Quan. Love that fragrance. Good girl gone bad. So some of these are like fluffier fragrances. Some of these are powdery fragrances like the Narciso Poudre Cube. Lovely is a musky fragrance, as you know. You get the, the notion here, okay? One of these things is suspiciously different, and it's this terracotta. I really wanted to give it a home with an eyesight because I want to keep wearing it through the winter. Girls can do anything. Beautiful pear forward fragrance. Love that. Look, Barney's New York Luna Nera. <sighs> this is one of the most beautiful powdery fragrances ever. My poor husband hates it, but I really would like to wear it, especially when he travels. Over here are my Baccarat Rouge 540-ish fragrances, okay? So I have Essence from Genre Parfum. I have, do you belong here, Cherry Casino? Yeah, it's Baccarat Rouge 540 plus Lost Cherry from Dua. Hello, Dua. Sweven is one of the Best dupes for Baccarat Rouge 540 from Okcha, of course, Cloud. Amber Rouge from Oriantica, arguably one of the best dupes. As well as Amber Oud Rouge from Al Haramein, great dupe for the x -trait. And then Trajan from Electimus, which is beautiful. Moving along. So anyway, that shelf is mostly sweater weather kinds of fragrances, some powdery fragrances, a few anomalies, and then all of my BR540 tributes. <laughs> and then we've talked about the vanilla shelf quite a bit, but I just wanted to share that I did rearrange some things to make more sense, like all of the vanillas that have citrusy notes like Zara's uh, Sweet Pastry in Paris, Mont Blanc Signature, Souffle Intense. Those are over here in this section. And I am not quite sure still what's happening over here, but we'll, we'll get to that. And then my chocolate fragrances are over here. I'm gonna be doing a chocolate video soon. This bad boy just came in and I've wanted it for a while. And I forgot that it was on the way when I made the original video. So I had to like rearrange everything to fit the scent, but it's Carnal Cacao. Gosh, what a beautiful tuberose uh, cacao kind of a fragrance. And right below, we kept all of the coffee fragrances. So I have my here. sweet womanly florals in here. So then here generally are the ones that I am going Going to give away or sell on Mercari, not because I don't like them. Well, there's a couple that I don't like and I'll share them with you, but more so because they just didn't make the cut as I was arranging the fragrance shelves. So, I mean, there's some really, really nice ones here. Like I like Layla, 
which is this strawberry, light, summery, beautiful fragrance. I've worn it a few times, not a lot, and I don't reach for it, but it's really quite pretty. I can't believe that I'm letting go of Spiritus from Baruge. This is like a, a clone for men's Creed Aventus, but quite honestly, I thought I would wear it. I wore it like maybe once or twice, and that's it. My husband's not into it, so unfortunately, it's I just I won't wear it. Anything related to Mojave Ghost, this is desert glass, and I also have an oil in here somewhere. I can't find it. But, you know, I, I've just come to realize that I want to like this fragrance more than I do. Like, I'm just not a Mojave Ghost fan, but I feel like I should be, which is why I bought this. And I, the fragrance is beautiful. It is, but it's just, it's not for me. And then a few fragrances that I absolutely dislike. I'm going to try to sell them and see if anybody's interested People's in taste or different. So I'm going to try to sell these. But the truth of the matter is I would never wear these. Like a lot of these other fragrances, I still would absolutely wear. I like them a lot, but I just don't have room for everything. So something's got to go. But these Amouage Myths, or is it Myth? Myth or Myths? Y'all, Myths. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> I don't even have words. So that concludes the fragrance reorganization series. I thought it was going to be multiple parts. I was able to do it in two parts. I hope they weren't too long for you. I feel very relieved and very thrilled that I have reorganized the entire collection into a way that semi sort of makes some kind of sense for the way that I actually select fragrances in the morning and at night when I'm getting ready for bed. So would love to hear your thoughts about the reorganization method. Is it the kind of arrangement that would make sense to you? I know some of you arrange by house, others by colors, and I love that the idea that some of you arrange by like season be it a warm weather kind of a fragrance or a cold weather period, end of story, that makes sense too. So I feel relieved that I've made more room on some of the shelves to be able to see everything that I have and that I have determined the fragrances that need to find another loving home while I enjoy the rest of them that are staying here, as well as I've identified fragrances that are gonna go into a bin and be pulled out next summer again. So thank you so much for bearing with me as I've made my way through this reorganization organization drama <laughs> and figured out how it is that I think that I want to organize things. I really appreciate you and would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Take care. See you in the next video.